Jared Walsh is my name. Um, my family are, are from my Cullen here since about 1800. Um, they arrived here in my Cullen. My aunt farmed here um, for the last uh, 50 years and I took over the farm about 10 years ago. It's about 85 acres um, in total, um, 50 acres of the family land and then my, my uncle has another 30 acres that I farm as well. I keep a herd of uh, belted Galloway cattle. The Galloway breed are a very hardy breed. Um, they have a double hair coat, they're polled, they're easy kept. It's all in, in, in either grass or woodland. There's no tillage or vegetables grown here, um, but there'll be a lot of woodland as well, scrub woodland, hazel woodland, some oak trees, and a lot of that provides a lot of shelter for the cattle. So the system is, is quite natural, it's, try, it's to try and make it simple on me. All farming involves input and marginal farming involves a fair bit of input but it's to try and keep that input to a minimum in the context of time and effort. The cattle are out wintered in the winter time um, on silage or hay. I keep about 12 cows um, and they have a calf every year and I generally keep the calf to the following year and sell them as stores. As regards uh, grazing this uh, mountain land, the millennia grasses, this was abandoned for a number of years, like from my grandfather's time, and bringing the cattle back in. There was a lot of roan and holly trees, as you can see here in my hand and behind me. Two of the trees, along with kind of scrub oak and willow, would be typical of this mountain land. And it's tried to leave, an amount, leave the trees intact so that you end up with, with the rich, diverse uh, ground of, of the millennia, as I described earlier, and also um, have all the trees all these mountainous trees, I mean, I'd often flush longer down in these trees behind me. Um, you know, woodcock at winter in here, there'd be tons of woodcock in this area in the winter time. Um, and it's a, it's a brilliant habitat for them, to, um, for them to winter. And it's also shelter and shade for the cattle. Uh, this area where the cows are grazing here um, is, is an area that I took over grazing last year. There hadn't been cattle on it in 30 years. There hadn't been any animals. Some of the area, of the, about 30 acres, and some of the area had ponies on it, but no cattle. So over a few years, the cattle will graze down the millennia. You can see the sphagnum moss. I just took a, pulled a bit of sphagnum moss and millennia there, but the millennia, is, there's still a strong touch on the millennia. But over a few years between walking and grazing, that'll disappear and the fresh millennia will come up each year and they'll graze down each year. This will be kind of classic abandonment. This will be where wildfires occur out in Connemara and Wicklow and places like that. By keeping the cattle in a place like this, the millennia will get grazed down and wildfires and things like that will, will cease to be an issue. Where we are now is on uh, is, is what we, we considered the good land. Um, it'd be where the silage or hay is cut annually. There would have been mixed farming. In my father's childhood, these fields would have been ploughed and would have been tilled. Um, but in, in the, since the 1960s, it's just been grass. But the, what we call species rich. So the key, one of the key flowers in species rich hay fields is yellow rattles. It's an annual. It's hemiparasitic in that it takes from the grass. So. It, it, it's kind of one of these things for a farmer, you, you, I'm conscious, I know what it does, it takes fertility from the grasses, but I think when it's cut a, bit, a little bit later, the silage, the grass has a chance to come on a little bit later. As you can see behind me and around the edge of this field, all the hedgerows are let go, um, so you have lots of, uh, lots of berries in the, in the haw, lots of haw berries along the edge of this field, lots of uh, hazelnuts, uh, trees um, and ash, they'd be the, probably the tree dominant trees in the hedgerows and lots of great stone walls here, limestone stone walls that um, are great for uh, great boundaries for cattle. They're good strong uh, stone walls. So where we are here is on what I believe is an esker, a glacial esker, a strip of glacial till. It's one of the most biodiverse uh, pieces of the farm. What I'm holding here in my hand is a uh, quaking grass, um, which is a, a grass, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a it's a grass associated with species, very species rich areas. Um, there'll be lots of flowers here throughout the springtime. It's not as plentiful at the moment. Um, lots of headers there currently. Um, and just over beside me here, like goldenrod is, a, is the yellow flower there in, beside me. Um, and lots of headers. One of the things I talk about in this is, uh, this would be quite similar to the burren in a lot of, uh, in a lot of respects, and it's something I need to consider here. Um, there's a lot of encroachment of uh, uh, hazel and, um, and birch onto this piece of ground. Even with the cattle grazing, um, the, the, the hazel and birch has continued to advance each year. The diversity of flowers in this piece of ground and butterflies 
um, is, is extremely high, it'd be the highest on the farm. Um, so within consultation with the National Parks and Wildlife Service, I have to look at, at uh, maybe uh, pulling back some of the hazel and their birch um, from this area and allowing the flowers to thrive. I think there's a way of educating marginal farmers that there is value in nature, there is value in not necessarily letting, your, like letting the fields go totally, but actually in, a, in observing diversity, in observing that if you don't put as much nitrogen on the field this year, that the, the, the flowers will come true. With the way the economic model for beef farming has gone, there isn't necessarily a value in always having more and more and more and trying to drive greater productivity out of the land. So an ecological productivity can come in its place. Farmers will follow that if, 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 they, if they see value and if, if it's applied. Um, certainly marginal farmers um, will because uh, it is, you know, the, the European grants process is an important part of continuing um, farming these, uh, these uh, type of environments.